Hey everybody, my name's Silver and welcome back here on the channel. Today marks one of the first anime reviews that we are going to be doing, at least going over for winter 2019 anime. Today we are going to be going over Tate no Yusha no Naragari or The Rising of the Shield Hero, which is actually the English title. Episode 1 for me came out yesterday, which was December 31st. Today is January 1st of 2019. Happy New Year's, by the way, for anybody that is actually watching this on the same day that it was uploaded. If not, then I hope that you did have a New Year's as well as those who are actually watching this right now. But... I just want to let y'all know real quick before we do begin that this episode one was actually pre-aired on December 27th of 2018. But for me, I saw that I saw that this was actually uploaded last night on the 31st and the regular broadcasting will, you know, start back up again on January 9th. Just in case you are curious when this anime will actually continue. And because this was a pre-aired, we weren't able to actually see the opening or the ending. Trust me, I'm a sucker for anime openings. All of them are absolutely amazing. Well, at least not all of them, but at least the, the vast majority of them are absolutely amazing. But we didn't get to see it. It sucks. But then again, you know, we'll see it the next time the show actually comes up. Real quick, I guess I could also say that this episode was actually a good, like, 44 minutes long. <laughs> it's so weird because it really did feel like I was watching just like two episodes, but this was just episode one. You know, if the next episode comes up and it's going to be episode three, then, you know, we'll just switch the title and everything like that. But that's not the case. So either way, before we do begin with the Tate no Yusha no Naragari anime review here in the channel, if you guys are hyped and ready for more anime re reviews, you know, oh my goodness, how in the hell did I fuck that up? Either way. Make sure to hit that like button for your boy as well as consider subscribing to the channel for more anime game related content. And if you do want me to review any other anime that you do think is worthy, then don't forget to let me know which one in the comment section below. And with all of that out the way, now we can begin. This anime, this The Rising of the Shield Hero, Tate no Yusha, which is probably what I'm just going to call it from now on, was absolutely amazing. I'm not going to lie to y'all. It, it may have been 44 freaking minutes, but it literally, like, time flew by. I was sitting here watching it on, like, my little big screen monitor, you know. I was literally, like, laying back. I was... I, I could not stop watching it. That's how good it is. This is why I'm so hyped for 2019 anime. But let's go ahead and begin real quick, though. I am going to go on and read off of the summary from my anime list and then go ahead and talk about the anime and give you guys my, I guess you could say, personal review. That's kind of how I want to do, you know, these new anime reviews here coming to the channel for 2019 however if you do want me to go back to the old way which is where we literally just talk about everything that happened in said episode then just go ahead and let me know you know this is just like a trial and error type thing but either way let's begin off of my anime list it does say or at least the summary does say the stories of old tell four or tell of four unworldly heroes wielding the sword, the spear, the bow, and the shield, who defended the land from wave after wave of calamity with the fate of the world and balanced the kingdom of Melramic summons these legendary figures in modern day Japan, the call is answered and the unwitting heroes are transported to this fantasy universe. Thrust into Melramic and given the title of shield hero, Otaku Nafumi Iwatani is labeled as the weakest due to his lack has due to the lack of his offensive capability and apparent inexperience. When the heroes part ways to start their journeys, he is only one willing companion. The beautiful princess Malti Melramic, however, she soon betrays him, steals all his money, and accuses him of taking advantage of her. For his illegal crimes, now Fumi is branded a criminal and made outcast of society. With his hatred filling his heart, he sets out alone vowing vengeance against those who have wronged him. I want you guys to know, I've read this summary many times before this anime actually did come out, and I was getting the impression that this anime was going to start off really slow and just go boom into action. But the story for this is actually really not bad, and this summary was actually right on. The anime actually does start with, I guess you can say, I want to say a prelude to what we should be getting later on in the story, you know? But that may not be the right words. Either way, though, we do see the shield hero and another girl chilling at, like, the top of a rock or something like that. While, she, like, she goes and, like, gives him something. And then, like, apparently 
our protagonist Naofumi Iwatani, the otaku, wakes up. And then, you know, we learn about his story, about him saving his brother. So he's set with life, and he's an otaku, and he really doesn't have to do anything else. And then, you know, he goes to a bookstore, and that's kind of how he gets... I guess you can say transferred or summoned to the quote unquote fantasy universe. While he's there, the moment he gets summoned, actually, that's when he meets the other heroes. Apparently, they all got summoned at the same time, and they are all from Japan, which is really amazing, at least how they did that. But either way, they all end up meeting the king. Then they all decide to, oh, hey, if we want to figure out what's going on, if we want to somehow get back home to Japan, then we have to defeat the waves of calamity, I guess you can say. And this was really confusing for me, at least how they described it. But later on, you, you actually do get to understand. So I'm just going to go ahead and let you guys know right now. The waves aren't really like like tidal waves or anything like that. It literally means like, like waves of like enemies i guess you can say you know how like you play a game or something like that and you have wave one and you defeat all the enemies then it's wave two three four five how many other waves that are in that specific i guess you could say mission or whatever game that you may be playing you know i'm kind of basing this off of call of duty because you know call of duty gang yeah <laughs> but either way that's kind of how they explained it so the kingdom of Melramic was actually prepared for the first wave. They actually took that wave and destroyed it with ease. The second wave came and they thought they could do the exact same thing that they did with the first wave. But no, the second wave, obviously, like how waves go, the enemies get stronger, they get faster, they get smarter. They were not ready for it. They were unprepared. So that's why they did the summon. We do learn later on, though, closer to the end or at least the middle of the episode that the only way that the four heroes can get back home is if they defeat all of the waves. Right now, we have seen wave one and wave two, at least from the stories that the king has told us, so they have to get ready for wave three, four, and I'm, I'm, I think it stops at five? I'm not really sure. It's either four or five, but either way, that's kind of what happens. This, them coming into a fantasy universe, though, they kind of made it like a sort of online type of thing, if you guys have actually watched that. And what I mean by that is, like, certain heroes can access their skill list or something like that. I'm pretty sure that's what it's called. Their, their status menu. That's what it is. Certain heroes can access their status menu, and those four can. When, you, when we see a status menu, we're like, damn, this kind of reminds us of, of a game, you know? And it was really nice how those the four characters you know the sword the spear the bow and the shield i actually forgot all of their names are suffering now Fumi. if you do want to know it then i guess you could say just like watch it i'm sorry if i do end up doing the other episode then i'll probably try to at least remember the names but they all figure out that oh hey only certain heroes can do this stuff we can look at our things we're all level one which means that we have to train so we can actually fight the waves so the king actually decides to give everybody, I guess you can say, a whole bunch of people that they could go ahead and do their journey with because the only way that they can train and gain, like, gain their levels is for each separate hero to go on their own journey. But those heroes can take a squad of people, but the squad of people will actually have to want to go with him, if that makes sense. The only reason why they all can't go together is for the fact that apparently it takes longer for their weapons to actually level up, I guess you can say, if they were all together. So that's why they had to split off in different groups. So there's right now there's four groups, one of the shield, the spear, the bow and the shield. I'm pretty sure that was the last one, but nobody wanted to go with the shield a whole bunch of people went with the sword the spear the bow and nobody wants to go with the shield and for some reason this world has a saying of if you become the shield then you're basically a loser you know you're a failure in life nothing good is going to happen in your way like nobody wants to be with somebody who is destined for bad luck so that's why nobody wanted to be with nafumi but that's when we see as read off from the my anime list summary the princess actually is like oh hey can i come with you yada 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 she shows him around town and everything helps him i guess you could say get used to life or at least how life should have been but then later on that's when she betrays him 
you know, like the whole capital now knows of what happened. She actually frames him of doing, you know, the dirty sexual stuff with him. And it was absolutely wild. That's when we actually got to see her true colors. We got to see his true colors as well as talking about some. He wanted to go home, but that's when the king actually told him, oh, hey, you all can't go home until you defeat the calamity. So... He ended up leaving. He's not per se banished, which I actually thought that he would have been, you know, at least after doing a crime like that. But I'm guessing because he's a hero, he was neither banished nor died. It's just for the fact that everybody in that capital, in that city now knows of what he's done. So people then shun him out of it. You know, you even have some people trying to steal money from him. People basically treating him like dog shit, you know, while everybody else gets, you know, the good. You know, like like everything handed to them, you know. So this is why I really do love Tate no Yusha, no Naragari. It's for the fact that the shield hero is supposed to be a quote-unquote loser, a failure, something like that. And then you have the other three. So right now, I'm not going to say he's quote-unquote competing with them. But at this point, he technically is, you know. Because I wouldn't say it's really a competition, but it's more like... You all shunned me out. Everybody was like, oh, no, you know, we, we probably should have killed you, but you can't. Yeah, 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 you're banished. Not really, but, you know, everybody's going to know what you did. So that's why he starts to leave. And, you know, that's when, you know, at least when from the my anime list, the my anime list where it said, oh, you know, with his hatred filled with heart, he sets out alone vowing vengeance against those who wronged him. He's basically talking about the princess, but he believes that it's all of them that they conspired or that they conspired this whole thing together because he's the shield, you know, and that's why they basically shunned him out. But we actually see this character grow. Normally, when you see an RPG, sort of online type of anime, you see the character traveling with somebody, they kind of teach them the ropes, and, you know, it's kind of easy going from there. But because he's the shield and he does not have that at all, he is now being an adventurer himself. He's now having to, I guess you could say, protect his own life other than having people protect it for him. And, you know, having that main character like, oh, my goodness, like I'm the main character. Nothing bad's going to happen to me. Yada, yada, yada. You know, I'll always have people there with me. That's not him. This man literally at the end of the episode goes with a slave owner to go search for people because he felt so bad about doing wrong by others you know he even had like a couple people from, from like the slums you know because like he can't eat at the top anymore you know with like all like the cherished food and everything he he, he got to eat down low which is not bad because i mean you still got to eat somehow right but either way he even had those type of people coming to him like oh man you know let's form a party give me all your money so i can buy these weapons and they were basically going to do the exact same thing that the princess did and he had enough he was like, no, they had a whole entire fight and everything. But because he's the shield, he can't really fight with that. So while he was training, he ended up getting monsters on him. But he's become like resistant to the monster because of his levels. So he uses the monsters to attack the shield to defend. It's really freaking amazing, bro. This story is absolutely wild. I cannot wait for more episodes, dog. But I guess one thing I will end off this whole entire review with is at the end when he did go see the slave trade owner and he was looking by just to see if he could actually go ahead and maybe buy a slave for himself because, you know, they apparently have a collar on them or I don't know if it was a collar or like a certain magical spell or something. But either way, if they try to disobey their master, they could possibly die. So he was like, oh, hey, you know, I wouldn't have to worry about people trying to get on my ass anymore, you know. So he goes in there and he hears a, a girl's voice like coughing or something like that. And then he opens up the blinds or at least because, you know, or at least like he opens up like the little like curtains from the cage, not the blinds. I'm sorry about that. And it turns out to be a girl. Now, this girl, if you look at her correctly and if you look at her, you can kind of tell that she is the girl who is actually on the the cover photo. She's the same girl who has the sword on the cover photo. Hopefully you guys can actually see the cover photo right now. But we kind of get the feeling that, oh, hey, this is her. So, oh, shit, he actually takes her. I don't know if she'll still end up being his slave, yada, yada, yada. But either way, 
This anime is absolutely amazing. What a great way to start off winter 2019. If you guys are into action type anime, I definitely, definitely recommend that you guys watch it. Apparently there's a light novel for this as well. The second episode should probably air sometime next week, maybe on January 9th, which should be the scheduled date. But then again, we'll probably get it on the 10th, the 11th, you know, because we have to get the sub version. Either way, though, that is it for my Tate no Yusha no Nargari episode one anime review. If you guys did enjoy, don't forget to let me know in the comment section below what exactly you did like about this anime. Again, if you do have any other one that you do want me to review, don't forget to let me know about those in the comment section below as well. Either way, though, I'm gone. Have a good day. Have a good night, wherever you are. And I will see you all next time.